Hello, seniors. It's been a while and I'm glad to see you all again. Another journey is yet to overcome. So let's step ahead in learning another exciting area of science as a subject, the physical science. It is the science concerned with the study of inanimate natural objects including physics, chemistry, astronomy, and related subjects. That definition is taken from Oxford Dictionary. Let us learn physical science while having fun. Our lesson today is how energy is produced and managed. At the end of this module, you are expected to describe the different sources of energy, give a brief summary of how energy is produced from different sources, differentiate between renewable and non-renewable sources of energy, and outline the pros and cons of the different sources of energy. Defining energy is both simple and complicated. The definition varies from one field of science to another, but the most common definition it uses is the ability to do work. Energy can be found in almost everything and everywhere. Can it be found on the places we used to go? Can we find it on the things we possess? The answer to that is yes. For example, when we digest food, our body uses chemical energy embodied in the food to move around. When we turn on the TV or gadgets, electricity is used to create the picture on the screen and the sound it produces. Most of the electricity that we use in our daily lives are produced from the chemical energy released in the burning of coal, oil, or gas. Now, if energy can be found literally on everything, why do we hear so much about energy crisis? According to the first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of conservation of energy, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. If that is the case, is there a need to worry about running out of energy? Well, that question can be answered if we fully understood the concept of energy. As stated, energy comes in different forms and can be used in different ways through conversion. Given a scenario of leaving a hot milk in an air-conditioned room, what will happen to the milk? In a matter of time, the hot milk will turn into a cold milk, thus there is heat loss. Is there a way of turning back the milk into hot once it has cooled down? Is there any way to collect the heat loss from the milk to the environment? None. In any example that we consider, we will see that energy in the usable form is dissipated to the surroundings in less usable forms. Hence, energy is consumed and would not replenish once it's used to do work. With this taken into consideration, the next thing to do is look for conventional or non-renewable and renewable sources of energy. Conventional or non-renewable energy sources are the oldest sources of energy like coal and petroleum. Conventional energy sources are limited. They will not last forever and will eventually run out. Renewable energy, on the other hand, uses energy sources that are continually replenished by nature. The sun, the wind, water, the earth's heat, and plants. With the use of renewable energy technologies, these fuels are turned into usable forms of energy, regularly electricity but also heat, chemicals, or mechanical power. To put it simply, this energy can be used again and again and will never run out. Let's study the possible sources of energy that might help you to understand how energy is produced and managed. The first source is fossil fuels. Fossil fuels come from organic remains of prehistoric organisms. Examples of this are hydrocarbons such as oil, coal, and natural gas. Coal is the world's largest source of fossil fuel. 
It is comparably affordable and is readily obtainable. Fossil fuels harness energy from the sun when they were still alive through the process of photosynthesis. To put it simply, fossil fuels are captured sunlight. Oil in the form of gasoline is used as engine fuel for vehicles and in generators, lawn mowers, leaf blowers, and small boat motors. Heating applications use natural gas and coal. However, fossil fuels is known to pollute the environment. Its reservoir is limited and will last for 100 years. The second source is biogas. This kind of energy can be produced from raw materials such as agricultural waste, manure, municipal waste, plant material, sewage, green waste or food waste. Biogas is a renewable energy source. When bacteria decompose manure anaerobically or without oxygen into a gas mixture composed of about 60 to 70 percent methane biogas is obtained. This is important in generating heat, hot water, or electricity. The leftover digested manure can be used as fertilizer, bedding, mulch, and potting soil. Biogas enables farmers to produce their own electricity and reduce water contamination, odor pollution, and global warming emissions caused by animal waste. In Batangas, there are some places like Lipa constructed a biogas digester as an alternative energy source. This successful producing methane gas used for cooking could sustain the need of the community. Geothermal This energy optimizes the heat energy from the Earth's crust. This heat energy heats up rocks affecting the nearby groundwater. Once the groundwater becomes so hot, it turns into an underground steam. Then this steam is used to drive turbines that generate electricity. It is said that geothermal energy is the main source of energy in the Visayas region. It has been around for whatever length of time that the world has existed. So geothermal means earth heat. It is clean, sustainable, and environment-friendly. The problem with this is it can only be produced at selected sites worldwide. The largest group of geothermal power plants in the world is located at the Geysers, a geothermal field in California, United States. In the Philippines, some geothermal power plants include Makiling Banahaw or Makban Geothermal Power Plant in Laguna, Leyte, Geothermal Power Plant in Leyte and Tiwi Geothermal Power Plant in Tiwi Albay. Next is Hydro Power Plant. Hydrothermal energy is usually associated with dams since there is only few waterfalls exist in the country. The kinetic energy and potential energy of a falling water is being converted to produce electricity. Produced from the heat obtained from hot water from hydrothermal vents or sea water in contact with hot rock beds. Hot water from hydrothermal vents is collected into heat exchanger. The heat from the water is transferred to another fluid which evaporates and drives the turbines to generate electricity. This is the main source of electricity in Mindanao. The fifth source is batteries. It is a chemical source of energy that produces direct current, or DC, and some are rechargeable while some are not. Batteries are devices that store and convert chemical energy into electrical energy. The energy produced results from a chemical reaction. However, they do not have carbon dioxide emissions. When it is connected to an external circuit, electrolytes move within the battery and the chemical reactions are completed at the two terminals of the battery. The movement of electrons generates the current and sends electricity to the external circuit. For households, batteries can be used to provide backup power in case of backouts or blackouts. Batteries are not considered as 
major energy supply because of performance and safety issues, regulatory barriers, the resistance of utilities, and cost. Next is solar cells. The energy derived from the sun through the form of solar radiation is directly converted into electricity. This energy will continue to renew until the sun ceases to exist. Solar cells system mostly has these three main parts. One, modules that convert sunlight into electricity. Two, inverters where electricity is being converted into alternating current or AC so it can be used by most household appliances. And three, battery that store the excess electricity produced by the system. Solar batteries power spaceships and are used to provide electricity for weather instruments in remote areas. Large solar panel fields are often used in the desert to charge small substations, and many homes use solar systems to provide for hot water, cooling, and supplement their electricity. The problem with solar cells is only certain parts of the world get enough direct power of the sun to generate usable power from this source because of its geographical location. Aside from that, solar energy storage is expensive, weather dependent, and uses a lot of space. Solar energy reduces electricity bills and a renewable source of energy. Biomass is the seventh source of energy. It refers to the organic matters and waste from plants and animals such as compost, crop remnants, and garbage. Plants get the energy from the sun through the process of photosynthesis, and this energy is passed to animals upon consumption. Biomass is used to produce alcohol and methane, which are fuels useful in energy manufacture and running cars. This uses organic material like crops, plants, trees, yard clippings, wood chips, and animal wastes, and is commonly used throughout the world. The materials are burnt to generate heat. The heat produced can be directly used to do daily chores like cooking food and boiling water. By burning the biomass in a boiler, the generated heat is used to produce steam which drives a turbine to produce electricity. One of its issues is that it produces a large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and this causes air pollution. Are you familiar with this place? The picture is a smoky mountain composed of millions of tons of waste materials. In this area, the combustible Substance combine decaying matter like plants or food products. The field produces another source of energy called biomass as bacteria decompose organic waste such as manure, septic tank sludge, food scraps, pond bottom muck, etc., and methane produced. This methane derived from the organic wastes, mainly manure. Number 8 is thermal power plant. Heat energy is being produced and converted into electricity by burning large amount of fossil fuels burnt in power stations. Nine is wind power. The energy from the wind is being harnessed by the wind turbines, converting the wind energy into mechanical energy. This kind of energy is renewable since the wind on the surroundings is unlimited. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of physical science and I really hope you've learned something from this video lesson. Thank you and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.